windy out today. When I started making things out of wood, the very first thing that I made was this. A bench hook. That's it's a piece of wood that has two other pieces of wood on it right there. You can plane against it. That was before I had all of these holes drilled here for, for bench dogs. Or stops, etc. So it creates a stop that you can plane against in case the, the, the back fence of your table. Or maybe you don't even have a real woodworking table. Maybe you have nowhere to work that isn't like a kitchen table. Well, make yourself a bench hook, and now you have a workspace. And this, because I threw it together very quickly, and before I had really done any woodworking other than making this, this this sucks. <laughs> this is, it's not flat, it's, it's bowed on that side. This is very roughly hacked together. This is terrible. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new one. And in fact, we're going to make two new ones. See, I worked with one that was that was nice and wide like this, and I would like it. I'd like some modifications. For one thing, I'm going to make mine split, and so that there is two of them, so that I can work wider lengths of wood very comfortably. I can spread one all the way down to the end of my table and get the whole thing on there widthwise. I'd also like it to be a little bit longer. From here to here is 12 inches. I'd like to make this whole baseboard be 18 inches. I'm probably still gonna hold the thing on with nails, just because while I normally hold everything together with joinery, I'm kind of in a hurry because I have other projects that I want to do today and time runs short. I have a marking line scribed in here at 18 inches. That's gonna be the length of the entire baseboard. I have not perfected this edge. That edge is left raw because this is not furniture, this is a tool. So I can uh, be a little rougher because the only person who's going to see it is me and maybe any hypothetical people I'm working with in the future. Anyway, so I'm going to cut that out. And normally I would cut this by hand, but I'm going to be using a jigsaw because it is a power saw that is quick to use and you can get one fairly cheap. It's got the depth that the blade goes to at most is about as thick as the thickest stock that I cut, and if it's any thicker than that, then I'm comfortable using a handsaw for that. I'm comfortable using a handsaw for this too, but I would like it to be fast. So here we are. I was mindful to leave an extra sixteenth of an inch, which is the size of the trench, the cur saw kerf that this uh, saw cuts with. Now, because I wanted to make two bench hooks that are half the width of this, I'm going to cut uh, find the center of this incredibly quickly using the speed square. I'm going to take that out to some number, 10 degrees in this case, and I'm going to make a line that I know passes through the middle, and my pivot point is exactly on the corner. Now I'm just going to pop that around, make sure that I am at the same angle. It doesn't matter what the angle is as long as you use the, sa you use the same one for both. Get my marking knife the right way around, and make there, right where, where the X marks, is the middle point of this board. So to double check that, that is right there. Yep, same both ways around.
I've decided that the fences are going to be an inch and a half each, so I need to make two of these, a top and a bottom for each one. Now I had cut them long ways this way so that the grain was running in the same direction so that when they inevitably adjust with moisture they're all doing it in the same direction, more or less. But part of the way that we get around the little errors is with nails. Nails are flexible, so if the wood shifts, the nail will shift with it instead of resisting and splitting out the wood the way that a screw would. Okay, so I'm going to use three for these. I'm going to correct my work a little bit because my driving of nails is not perfect to get on. I have this smooth cut side to the inside, because that's what I want stuff bumping up into. There we go. I'm using two to pin it in place, and one is going to be coming in at an angle a little bit to offer it some extra reinforcement. There. Put it right there, and it's lined up nearly straight. Because of the angle it's going in, I'm going to put it a little bit closer to this edge, but not too closer. You're going to split it out just from driving the nail in. So I'm just kind of putting it off center there. And I have it up on something. Because despite the fact that I'm not very good at nailing things in straight, it's easier to do it straight than to try and drive it in skewed. Although that is a skill you should work on. Okay, now we flip it around and we do the other side. It's a good idea to lightly tap them in place until you start to feel them poking out the back, and then line it up and then drive it home. Okay, so we have ourselves a pair of bench hooks. Good and lined up there. Good and lined up there. I like, I made them both an inch and a half broad so that they would be the same thickness for the both of them. Now you could take some piece of wood, not that one, and get that up against there and plane against it. If, now this, this is three quarters inch thick. I just left it the same size, I didn't plane it down. If I want to plane it down, I'm going to make some more, because that would be nice to have. Um, if I need to plane something thinner than this, I'll just put something else under it, and then go ahead. Now, I, if you're planing something, you don't necessarily have to worry about it being held down to the bench hook, because if you're planing well, if you're doing a good job, then you're going to go and apply your even pressure lead, and you're not going to draw it straight back. You're going to lift off and go ahead. So there's, as long as there's resistance in the direction that it's going, it shouldn't be a problem unless you're doing something fancy at an angle, in which case do something fancy at an angle that way, or that way as the case may be. Okay, so if I wanted to work on a board that was particularly wide, I could bring that out to there. Yeah. 
That looks good. Bench hooks together. And they pack up nice and small. Something I totally spaced while filming yesterday was how to actually use these things for more than just planing, because they are useful for sawing also. Now, if you watched my toolkit video, you know that I use a pull stroke saw, like a Japanese style, so it's cross cut on one side and uh, rips, rip cut on the other. And these are ideal for pushing motions when they're in this position. But in order to change that around, all you have to do is either get it this way, and you're alongside your table, or get it on the far side here, then you can work the pull stroke this way. It's gonna be something that I have to consider when I think about making a bench entirely from scratch. I've been looking at a lot of different bench designs, and I'm probably gonna wind up with a hybrid of those. Alright, thanks for watching.